AJ Kolbeck is just barely into his 20s, yet trapping has played a big part of his life. He's managed his own trap line since his mid-teens. It's trapping is just something that gets in your blood. My grandpa, he used to trap in all this area around here. I used to go kind of go out with him every now and again, and I'd go to his barn there, and he'd always have a coyote or a beaver. So I had exposure to that, and then my dad, he's been hunting for a long time, and I used to listen to stories of his hunting and his trapping buddies and all the stories and adventures and stuff they went through. On this day, AJ has brought me just west of Stony Plain to this small lake that is home to the muskrat. Thank you, sir. And apparently, there are a lot of muskrat in this area. Through regulated trapping, we can keep, rather than the populations spiking and crashing and spiking and crashing, we can keep it more of a level pace and keep more of a stable population. Muskrats are a really good example of that. When they get overpopulated, they get a disease called tularemia, and it'll wipe out your entire muskrat population for a few years. As soon as the muskrat gets caught, right, like this, he comes off and he'll be hanging right underneath there. So you'll have, for example, if I wasn't trapping this lake, right now there's muskrats everywhere. But a few years from now, or even next year, if there's nobody in here and the muskrats get too populated, right, they'll get that disease and they'll wipe through and there won't be any muskrats in this lake for probably three years. Then they'll start to come back and eventually there'll be lots again and then it'll crash. Indeed, the responsible management of Alberta's fur-bearing animals falls onto the shoulders of the Alberta Trappers Association. And perhaps just as critical is getting word out about the role trappers play today. Uh, the Trappers Association with Trapper Education, we do all kinds of stuff. Like I go to school quite often, grade four or five, and I start to learn about that fur kind of trade era. Uh, it's really good to have somebody who actually is still actively involved in the trapping industry. It's perhaps the method of trapping that raises many questions in connection with the trapping industry. But AJ is quick to point out much has changed on that front. You put this right in the entrance where the muskrats are going. Right. They swim in here. We've got this little kind of gate that closes. Right. They swim inside, and once they get inside, they can't get out, and it uh, keeps them submerged under the water. AJ uses a different type of trap for catching the muskrats that are swimming in more open water. What happens is the muskrat will come out, see this carrot, grab it, this trap here will actually close, and hopefully we'll have a muskrat waiting for us when we check it tomorrow. It's important to remember that every trap that is used in the field must be tested and approved. And even if you are trapping on your own property, you must still take a trapping course. As we continued our trip around the lake, we came across the telltale sign of another member of the rodent family, hard at work. So AJ, to coin the phrase, busy as beavers, uh, <laughs> that is, uh, look at this, this is quite amazing. Oh yeah, when uh, you get a good population of beavers in there, they, can, they don't waste a lot of time. And this isn't even that much. I've seen places where it's 10 times the amount of trees down as this place here. I mean, these are fairly substantive trees that they've brought down, but they're, they're stripping off the bark. Yeah, they'll eat the bark off, and uh, that's yeah. when you go to the beaver house, you see all them really nice white, cleaned right. off sticks. They can clean it off just like eating corn off the cob. Not a bad idea. In some cases, when you find a big beaver house like this, you can also find muskrats, but not today. <sighs> Nothing on this one. The bait's gone. But uh, nothing in the trap, so he outsmarted me. With so much attention these days being focused on collecting your own food, AJ feels there may be room yet for people to see the value of trapping. There's our muskrat right there. Because fur is such a nice thing to wear, and there's all this, this green movement nowadays. Right? Fur is about as green as it gets. So we've seen the care and effort that goes into trapping here in Alberta, and this is the product that is a result of all of that hard work. Canada was built on the tradition of trapping, and you can see the craftsmanship and the comfort of a hat like this, and we know in Alberta winters we could certainly use it. Mm -hmm.